we're having a look at a Smart 451. Now the issue is that there's a bit of a rattle while the car's driving and uh, the rattle goes away as soon as the brakes are applied a little bit. So we're going to have a look and see if we can find anything in the brakes here that might be causing that rattle when the car's just driving with the brakes not applied. So the first step is going to be to take this wheel off. I've already got the car jacked up and safe. Now the car doesn't have super high mileage, it's sitting about 150,000 kilometers. But right off the hop we can see the brake pads have a ton of meat on them, the rotors look like they're fairly new, and this caliper looks like it's been replaced. So we know that the braking system has been played with. And one thing that we can see right away is one of the anti-vibration springs on the brake pad is actually sticking out past the caliper here. So that pad's not sitting in the caliper the way it should be, and that's going to mean that We've got a bit of play in the pad here. You can see I can move that pad back and forth. So that's where that rattle is going to be coming from. So the solution to that is going to be to remove this caliper. Just make sure the pads are sitting in properly and that the caliper is holding down the anti-vibration springs properly. And that should take care of our rattle. Now the tools you're going to need are a 17 millimeter wrench to go uh, just on the slide right here and hold that while we unscrew the top bolt here, which is a 13 millimeter head. Now with that bolt out, we can peel the caliper away and get our pads out. Now we're being careful not to lean on that caliper because it's being held just by the rubber hose here. Uh, it's okay to dangle there a little bit, but we don't want to put our hand on it and stress that rubber hose because we could rip it out of the out of the car there so having a look at these brake pads we can see there's quite a bit of material here and the surfaces are nice and flat and clean so we're going to reuse these pads now putting the pads back in with the anti-vibration clips seated in the caliper properly is going to take care of that rattle issue that was the problem with the car to begin with but before i put these back in i am going to clean them off and just apply an anti-squeal compound to the backing pads as well, just for an extra level of protection against brake noise. We're gonna give the caliper a bit of a clean as well and compress that um, piston, just so that when we put it back together, it'll sit in the anti-squeal compound nicely and these brakes should be good for a long time. Now I've got my pads sitting here and I've got them on a clean paper towel. That's just so that the friction surface doesn't accidentally pick up a bit of grease from my bench or anything like that. They stay nice and clean. So I'm just going to give the backs a quick wipe with a bit of cleaner. I'm using acetone, but you can use anything that's appropriate. Brake cleaner is probably your best bet. You just want to get any of this brake dust off the backing plate so that the anti-squeal compound will stick to it properly. And then I've got a compound here. It's called Disc Brake Quiet by Permatex. And you'll notice that I've got uh, metal tab, this is the wear indicator, so basically when your pad wears down, this starts to rub on your rotor and makes a lot of noise. But this is the pad that is going to be on inboard in the caliper, so that's the one that's against the piston. And this is the outboard pad, so it's the one that's against the um, bracket, the slide. So I'm going to apply the compound a little bit differently on the two pads. Basically, I'm just going to apply the compound where it's in contact with the caliper. So on this pad, it's going to be just around this ring, and on this pad, it's going to be either side where it's touching that caliper bracket. Now I've got my compound on my pads here. I've probably used a little bit more than I need, but it does shrink when it dries. So I'm gonna let this set up for a couple of minutes. While that's drying and getting a little bit sticky, um, I'm actually gonna go and give the caliper a clean. So I'm gonna clean off the bracket and I'm gonna clean off the piston where it's coming into contact with the pads so that when I put the pads in and that caliper's on and squeezing, uh, it's actually gonna stick itself to those to that compound. Just gonna give my caliper a quick clean here. So I'm gonna clean the piston, 
where that surface is going to touch the pad and then I'm cleaning the back of this bracket here And by having those surfaces nice and clean, we're just making sure that that disc brake quiet's gonna stick to the caliper nicely and keep those pads from making any noise. So I've got my product applied to the back of the brake pads here. You can see it's changing colors uh, because it's starting to set up, it's drying out a little bit. Now, I did get a bit too much product on here. Um, when I flipped the bottle over, it just squirted right out, which is not an issue that I normally have, but in this case, I got a bit too much on there. So we have to wait a little bit longer for it to um, shrink a little bit when it dries and just make sure it gets tacky properly before I throw it in the car. And I'm ready to put my pads back in. Now notice I'm putting the pad with the wear indicator on the inside. And I'm gonna put my pad that doesn't have the wear indicator on the outside here. Now I'm moving the caliper just over with the slide a little bit to make sure that I clear my product over here and I've still got a little bit of a gap on the back side as well. And there we go. Just throw my bolt back in at the top. Now before I tighten that down, I'm gonna have a look in here and I'm making sure that those anti-vibration springs are both seated against the caliper here because what that does, those springs are sprung sort of out from the axle. And when you put the caliper in and squeeze those down, it actually pushes the pads down against the bracket. And when you have that little bit of pressure against the bracket, it'll keep that pad from moving around and making that rattling noise as you're driving. So making sure you have those spring clips seated properly, calipers in, and now I can tighten up my top bolt. Now I can throw my wheel back on. Now all that's left to do is to drop the car off the jack, check my torque on all of these bolts, and then take it for a test drive.